Hello, welcome to our Critical Practices Talks. This is our sixth conversation in a series of conversations that we have been uh, developing at the Center for Arts, Memory and Communities on Critical Practices, uh, where I've been inviting colleagues from contemporary artists, curators, and also uh, museum studies experts to delve into the question of uh, the capacities of practice to produce knowledge, advance critical inquiries, and also intervene in society. Uh, today, I invited Wayne Modest, who is here with us today. Thank you so much for accepting the invitation. Uh, and Wayne is a director of content for the National Museum of World Cultures. He's also professor of material culture and critical heritage studies by special appointment in the fac Faculty of Humanities at the University of Amsterdam. Modest was previously head of the curatorial department at the Tropen Museum in Amsterdam, keeper of anthropology at the Horniman Museum in London, and also director of the Museums of History and Ethnography in Kingston, Jamaica. He has held visiting scholar positions at the Yale Center for British Art at Yale University, and also uh, the School of Museum Studies at New York uh, University. Wayne Modest work is driven by a concern for more historically contingent ways of understanding the present, especially in relation to material culture and museum collections. His research interests include issues of belonging and displacement, material mobilities, histories of ethnographic collections and exhibitionary practices, difficult contested heritage with a special focus on slavery, colonialism and post-colonialism. Um, and also Caribbean thoughts. And we will be talking about some of these issues uh, shortly. More recently, uh, Wayne Modest has been researching and publishing on heritage and citizenship in Europe with special attention for urban life and on ethnographic museums and questions of redress and repair. As I said before, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and I would like to start by saying also that inviting you also opens a new chapter within the conversations that we are having in the critical practices talks, especially looking at uh, museum studies, uh, but also uh, as you uh, phrase the, the trouble uh, around uh, ethnographic museums. So I wanted to start from there and very much thinking in terms of uh, the function of ethnographic museums today. Um, and as some colleagues have suggested, including Tony Bennett and Nombles Krimt and, and many more, uh, the birth of the museum um, in the Western canon, in inverted commas, is very much intertwined with uh, the modernity coloniality enterprise, as colleagues from some from South America has, or Latin America has, have um, uh, um, uh, described. So I, I was wondering, uh, since you are, are committed to precisely pro problematizing these histories, um, how do you see the role of the museum today against the backdrop of um, all the uh, all the these debates that we see uh, taking place across the spectrum in relation to to the necessity to decolonize uh, the, the, the debates that are happening within those frameworks of those museums. Right. Well, thank you. Thank you, Caroline, and, um, um, and thank you for inviting me to this conversation, but also, you know, to think through the relationship between practice and theory, the relationship between practice and forms of knowledge. Um, yeah, you know, I sit in and I've sit in the framework of an ethnographic, so-called ethnographic or world cultures museums for several years now, for a while now, for most of my career. Um, in the context of Jamaica, it was different than when I moved to Europe and, 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 and started working here. Um, and I, I, I would I would answer your question by, because I, I am a, a, a 
a very strong supporter of the work of Tony Bennett. In a funny way, when I did my dissertation, my dissertation was, he didn't know it, but it was in conversation with Tony Bennett. Uh, we were having a conversation about the exhibitionary complex and what might the exhibitionary complex look like differently when the case question of slavery and colonialism or slavery and, and the ens and enslavement is central to the figure of the questions of the exhibitionary. So, um, so th th my starting point is also in the work that we do here is also in relationship to the work of, of scholars like Tony, who have been trying to um, think critically about the museum, its historical formation, but also more importantly, its afterlives. So and that's where my interest is. So if you ask me the question about the role of the ethnographic museum in the present, I would push back at you to say it has multiple roles. But one is that it forms a part, exactly as you say, of that nexus between the modern and colonial, modernity and coloniality of Walter Mignola and, 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 and others like, um, who is a really good colleague of ours, um, Rolando Vasquez. So it sits in that central nexus of knowledge and power. Um, but it is not a knowledge and power thing that we think about only in the past, but in the present that it is a part of the entailments of colonialism today. It forms part of the very, of, of, of still holding to representing in some ways, some of the logics that were a part of its forming. So in a sense, the discussions that are around decolonization are discussions that invite us to think again about what more precisely are those um, ongoing coloniality that is enshrined and meshed in the practice of museums work. And for us here, that, that, you know, on the one hand, that has to do with questions of representation, but we want to push it a little bit deeper, not just in, in as it articulates with practices of, you know, conversation about diversity and inclusion, which are central um, conversations, um, and who speaks, who has the right to speak about what uh, our museum is enmeshed in an idea about, um, a long idea about a representational economy, which was about others. We knew how to tell the lives of others, right? So there is that question. And I think that in museology, museum studies, there has been a critical heritage studies, a long history of that. But we must go deeper. And that deeper for me anyway, and for what we've been trying to do is to ask the question, how as museums do the very knowledge structures of which we are a part, and that includes the categories of formation, whether or not it is the disciplines to which we are um, aligned. In my museum, it is mostly anthropology, archeology, span art history and history. How are those disciplines themselves colonial? And what might it mean to undo to work at and by undoing doesn't mean that we can move back to a past where everything was wonderful but how do we work at undoing those structures of coloniality that are still ensnared in these in these disciplinary practices so um and that articulates also with or you know how we represent that to the public one of the things we've been interested in is just asking what i feel is simple questions but probably some people might even feel stupid or irritating questions. What might design histories look like differently if they didn't start in a Western episteme, but somewhere else? How do we understand design as a global project? And what might a history of design look like if it started from Indonesia or from somewhere else in the world? How might we think differently about um, fashion and fashion histories? So we attend or address the disciplinary framework as well through which coloniality continues to ensnare us. So that's one side. And the other side I would say is that, you know, we are very, very deep in this conversation about restitution, return, repair, reconciliation, and what is at stake in that we, we as a museum, we just, we, we announced a year and a half ago our framework for restitution. Uh, we just received together with the Free University, that's where I work, not the University of Amsterdam, but the Free University of Amsterdam. Uh, and other colleagues, a, a large project to study over four years, questions of restitution, to rethink questions of ownership, value, and so forth. So we are, we are at that. Uh, we do that as well. And that's a part of our role in the present, to try and help us as society, all of us, you, me, understand the workings of the colonial in the present, and to try 
to undo that so that we can imagine more equitable and better future. So that is one of the things. And it is done through the museum as a space for thinking beauty, through thinking art, art practices, design histories and all of that. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things I'll say. I have one other comment, but I won't say it now because I might be talking too much. So, so let me just pick up on, on that point about the, what you just mentioned now in terms of like the museum not being that space of fruition and of beauty, but actually having a different role and how people also audience, but also staff ourselves working uh, within, but also around these institutions also need to be involved and engaging uh, in those processes that are of undoing, as you mentioned, in terms of what the practices that build and let's say structure the project of the museum in the first place so i just wanted to go back to that because uh, i understand what you know your answer in terms of the function now but i just wanted to also ask in terms of the function as well in the relationship with its audience um, which kind of experience are these museums also proposing to their audiences that is not of encountering a story or a history that was not contested, but actually engaging with all those materialities as you, you talk about so eloquently, the materialities that, that disclose structures of power structures in general, but especially of extraction, of expropriation, yeah. and of exploitation. So how does that those tensions in a way become evident through the experience of the museum yeah no brilliant brilliant i mean you touch on something that we've been interested in uh, when we speak to the question of materiality so when we talk about materiality we, we have a double conversation one it is on the one hand around the material from what things were made and on the other hand it is about the condition of making so how were these things made right so 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 one could speak about a materialism that is about and historical materialism which which is the conditions under which making happens under which things happen so that both sides interest us and so we've been running an ongoing project that tries to look at that and one of the things that we've been thinking about is not necessarily to only look at the the the, the end product, that beautiful end product, which is the gold thing, but also to look at where did the gold come from and under what conditions were the gold made and what kind of extractive economies are attendant in that making and inequalities to try and suggest that those objects open up the possibility for us to see other things as well. So the aesthetic formation is important and we will continue to do that as a museum. I want to emphasize that because many people think that once I speak about decoloniality, then we can't come and look at the joy, the creativity and the amazing things that people make. No, I think that that is also important because one of the things that are, well, I'll get back to that. However, for a long time, we also denied that we were complicit in, 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 in the structures of inequality that continues in the present. We, we, as institutions, we would not want to see the gold mine because that was inequality. We need to also attend to that and see that we are not only implicated in, and, and by doing that, one of the things I'm interested in is how does that help us to also understand our role in planetary destruction? that we are actually implicated in a system where the planet was, you know, in extraction, in, in extinction. Um, you know, we are part of a trade in material culture that might have had some things to do with bird life and animal life in the Amazon. So how do we use our collections to also tell those stories um, to our publics as well, which I think is an important part of the experience. Now, some people will say to me, yeah, but a museum is a place where one should go and enjoy themselves. Uh, yes, that is true. It's, museums are also those places. <laughs> but we are also places where, you know, one of the things that I think a museum like mine, the one I work with, with my colleagues, is important for, is to try and also help us to understand what it means to share a world with others how we are implicated in this worldliness that happens every day, that is also destructive in some ways, even as parts of it are joyous. So the museum in that sense then can mobilize its collection on our account to think through planetary histories differently, 
to think through the relationship between colonialism and planetary con catastrophes, to think through the museum's relationship between the, the, the colonialism and cultural catastrophe, you know, languages that would have um, um, died through the colonial project. All of those things are also attendant and can be part of what we can do as a museum. And I feel that that is also an urgent part of how we as museum facilitate what, what, what um, um, Michael Rothberg calls the Im implicatedness, mm -hmm. that it helps us to understand how we are implicated, not that we are guilty, guilt-ridden, not that we are um, um, daughters, what is that now? Daughters and slack um, victims and perpetrators, not in that language, but that we are implicated in certain unequal presence and paths, and that actually we hold a responsible for fashioning better futures. Mm -hmm. And that is what I think that those, that kind of engagement with, you know, you know, the, the, the difficult, complex economies out of which objects came can help us to understand how might we think our responsibility different for each other, for one another, and together try and think about what other futures are possible that are better, more equitable futures. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's how I see our museums as one of the roles that I see us having. Mm -hmm. can, I, can I pick up on something you mentioned um, yeah. halfway through your answer that has to do with the scales in which you are, um, I think, enacting these discussions. So yeah. we're not looking only at the specificity of the materials of certain objects or sets of objects aka archives and collections. You are also putting this discussion at the level of environmental and climate change. Um, and, and that's, uh, well, we have a lot of colleagues, you know, discussing that specifically, but you are doing it within the museum, uh, within the museum and within museum practices. And I wanted to, to ask you in relation to very concretely the infrastructures of museums across um, across Europe, okay, let's talk about ethnographic museums yeah. specifically. Um, and within that, we would be thinking of Cap Henri and in Paris, we were thinking of British Museum, Ornament Museum, um, necessarily Tropic Museum and the other uh, museums that are part of that constellation, etc. and many more across Europe. So if we think of all the infrastructures uh, that are part of that project, and now I'm thinking of materiality of the buildings, not necessarily yeah. the collection, but the building, nice, nice, the nice. tabling, the pummeling, the, the staff, the um, entertainment that goes into that as well, in terms of like the spaces available for activities that are beyond and, you know, like the, the initial function, let's say, or even the purpose of the museum. So we're talking about a lot of things going into that, a lot of energy, a lot of resources. And, and when we we talk, you talk about the precarity of the planet and the precarity of life in relation to the history of the materials that are in the collection, I don't know if I can really pose this question clearly, but I think I wanted to ask you, what is the tension, what are the tensions between all these resources available to sustain, to conserve these collections and this project that is the museums? and precisely that larger history that is based on racial capitalism that has kind of pushed all this precarity of the planet and uh, human lives to the fore. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think that, I mean, you ask a very um, important question also in, in relationship to um, um, not necessarily thinking a history of planetary destruction, but also thinking the presence of that, right? And what is at stake in that? And to answer your question, you know, one does not undo the other. The idea, for example, that we do not try to, um, that we try to uncover a, a more complex history of how uh, other ways of thinking planetary destruction. And as actually in that, in doing that as an ethnographic museum, foregrounding the knowledges and the responses of indigenous peoples, in, which is some of where, you know, some of the thinking of indigenous scholars, such as Kyle White or, or somebody like um, 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 Roland de Vasquez is, is, is thinking about, you know, what is the Anthropocene 
if we are to think it through the analogies of 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 um, formerly colonized people, and how might we find just environmental justice for future? So, I, but I don't think that that is separate from the resource heaviness of museums today. I don't think that it is separate from the ways in you know our own um, complex relationship with donor, with donors, and what is at stake with 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 who gives money. I I I I, I think that. We sit now, and you know, you can see the Whitney Biennale in 2019, I think it was, where there was a lot of criticality around who supports the museum and how are they implicated. That is also happening in a beautiful project called, online project called the Natural History Museum, where they are looking at fossil, fossil futures um, um, and 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 the implicated of natural history museums in in actually oil digging. So, I'm not. I think that. For me, all of that is a complex um, of uh, interacting questions that one must ask about how we ourselves in the present are also implicated in, in, in climate precarity. In the same way, and you use the word racial capitalism very, very instructively, one of our next exhibition that is going to come up has a part of it that deals with racial capitalism. Because we are also interested in asking how, as a museum, we've been not only um, involved in the formation of a racial project, a racializing project of race, a museum like the Tropo Museum that was with, for 50 years had a, um, a physical anthropology lab in it. So we don't only ask that question as a pastness, but we ask the question as a very present issue. What is at stake in the race and the racism that is happening today? And how are we implicated in that project? Mm -hmm. So I, for, and that, that, that's why I said to you that you know my, my work tries to see these links and to see where those links are. But for the museum, our interest is to ask, what do we do with these inheritances of a colonial structure, of our collections, of our implicatedness in our past that continues to hold us in duress as um, What's her name? Um, Anne Stola says in the present. So one for me doesn't cut the other out. Now, to, if you say yes, but you are sucking energy as an institution, I will tell you yes. That is a part of all of our complicity, university, every, all of us. And the question is, what steps are we to make in the future? For me, to do that, one has to be first willing to ask the questions which are attendant to this the complex place right so and 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 so and and just the last to say you know while my foregrounding of um planetary futures is one thing you know our our project asks questions around gender and sexuality and gendered violence or gender uh, invisibility um, um we ask also questions um that are attendant to reparative justice and what that might look like uh, um, we, but we even ask questions about um, what beauty looks like when we, our starting point is from another location. So it's a complex thing that is coloniality, I would suggest, that we need to think through. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, um, thank you so much for, for your answer. Um, I was not claiming necessarily or making an argument May. for... Uh, but I, I really appreciate what you're saying in terms of the implicatedness and situatedness, also uh, terms that have been uh, debated by, by other colleagues, uh, but, but also the fact that you kind of expand the network of the museum, um, not necessarily kind of within is, you know, white walls, but actually expanding to other geographies, but also uh, other temporalities. And I think that's, that's the, the constant juggle, it seems right. to me. And Carolina, one of the things that you said just now, which I find really beautiful, is that a part of one of the things we ask is, I've been, we've been thinking a lot about the questions of care and, and, and how care has been articulated recently through indigenous, black, feminist thought, but also through questions surrounding um, um, environmental humanities. And we've been asking, recently, and that's a project that I'm in with several other ethnographic museums, what might it look like if care was our code? But what does it mean when a museum is, in, is, is fundamentally bound up to the idea of careful and caring futures? 
And I ask it very stupidly, sorry for those who will criticize me, but I ask what might it mean if we were to move beyond preservation as our drive towards care as a practice that is not just bound up with objects, but bound up with humanity, with the human and the non-human world, that we are implicated in that fashioning of a more caring present and future for the human and the non-human world. So that's actually one of the driving tenets of some of the work that we're trying to do. And I, I, I think I wanted just to hear your thoughts very quickly, probably, yeah. something that is related to to care, maybe this is a provocation more than, and again, I'm not subscribing to either or, I'm just trying to, to get your uh, opinion on precisely that, where's the focus of the function of the museum? And it probably goes back to my initial question, but probably something that I would like to push a bit further. The um, function, what, what is the function of a museum? Not necessarily the function, but in relation to so, that expansion that goes beyond the conservation of the objects. Um, it seems to me that despite the uh, attempts and, and very progressive uh, practices that are kind of unpacking that those collections in a different way, those objects are still, one could argue, the starting point, or those objects are still like around which the practice of the museum navigates. So I wanted to just ask the question, and maybe this is too um, elusive or intangible, but if we were to think that the collection would cease to exist tomorrow, uh -huh. and we would have exactly the same resources without the collection, we would have the same staff, we'll have the same, you know, like opening hours, etc. What, how could this practice change if we were not to put so much into the conservation, as you were saying, right. we would put into something else? What is that? How would care look like if that was not the core activity, the conservation of the objects? No, you know, you, you are, you, that's a very beautiful question and a difficult one because you, 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 you this is an entrapping question, right? Uh, primary, no, no, it's beautiful because there is something about your question which, demands of me something that I've always asked others to demand, which is that the museum is exactly the site where we can imagine other future possibilities. And you're asking me to imagine another future outside of the objects, which is beautiful. So you, you, you're basically holding me to my word. Um, you know, I was having this conversation with a colleague of mine uh, who is very much interested in questions of futurities. And, um, for me, I would suggest to you that the, the institutional work that needs to be done for us to imagine more caring and careful futures is one that is important in and beyond the museum. Actually, one of the things that I would even go and suggest, and I hope that this doesn't bite me uh, after, is that perhaps all our institutions, including the political, institutions that we have need to understand more or to invest more in asking the question about what caring for our plural possibilities are. So if I were to give up all of the objects, would, would the possibility still exist? Yes. Or will the, will the urgency still exist? Yes. Because in the locatedness that institutions are, me in Europe here, in the Netherlands, you in Coventry, in, in the UK, there is a need without question, whether or not we have objects or not, for us to have our visitors imagine, experience, understand the responsibilities that are at stake for living in a world with others. So whether I, I then if, if all of these objects were to go, I would mobilize dance to do that. Mm -hmm. I will use poetry. Mm -hmm. I would use contemporary art. I would use the creative imagination of the peoples who inhabit the world all over to be able to try with them together to imagine that more caring future. And I would even go as far as to say to you, you can do that also with 
the objects that are around us because trees and animals are a part of the 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 more than human world which we need to engage with to try and just try if we can even if it is an unreachable project just to try if we can to fashion something better than today that's what activism is many people are anxious about activism mm -hmm. and i too sometimes get anxious <laughs> as i'm working in the belly of the beast but act activism for me is a site where of impatience with the current structure and a way of trying to demand a better one, right? Mm -hmm. And so that is, that is my easy answer to you. But the hard answer is we are not going to get rid of objects tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So, and we know that. So the question then is what then do we imagine with these objects that we do have where restitution, return is self-evident in the practices that we do but it is not the only way we can imagine reparative futures mm -hmm. and i think that objects still offer us a possibility and in that sense the coloniality of the objects are very important for us to attend to but it is also possible for us in dialogue with the many peoples around the world for whom the objects have meaning for us to think of ways together of fashioning a museum where that, that thinking about how do we live together with others in just and equitable ways are, is important. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, maybe, maybe also the exercise of uh, imagining different futures is also a way for us to be able to address our present in a more creative way, isn't yes. it? So it's not necessarily that we need to uh, get rid of collections, but maybe if we understand what a museum would be without them, maybe the action also together with the, with the, with the objects of with the collection will be necessarily different. Yes, yes, um, definitely. And, and there's, I, I just, I just wanted to ask you in relation to those activities that the museum does, the kind of the public facing activities, right? So, mm -hmm. be it an exhibition, be it a discussion, be it like a workshop, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I believe, and this, I'm speaking from my situatedness now, and I've been practicing in the UK for roughly 10 years, so it's very much kind of drawing on what I've understood that is taking place here, what I would encapsulate very shortly in an expression, anti-intellectualism, um, that we see happening across the board, not necessarily only uh, within um, practices that happen in museums and, and contemporary art galleries, but also in academia, if one wants to understand Understand how that is taking place and I believe that the very beginning of uh, well I would integrate or contextualize uh, that tendency as um, precisely a resistance um, towards complexity complex uh, towards also criticality and how um, we've been I think under a, a neoliberal gaze um, we've been kind of being pushed towards entertainment more than engagement the engagement with complex uh, questions and and articulations so this is definitely something challenging for a museum such as the one where you're working because um, it doesn't necessarily uh, play for you, uh, but actually, I would say, against the work that you are trying to do. So I wanted to ask you, in the context of the Netherlands, um, um, more than, than necessarily, I, mean, I want to ask you to speak on behalf of continental Europe, um, mm -hmm. but in terms, of, in terms of the Netherlands, if you could tell me uh, what is your impression in relation to this tendency and if this is something that you have to deal with uh, within the museological practices. Um, uh, yeah, well, I, 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 I would suggest and not otherwise to um, in, in engage with it. I, I would say that ever since I started to think about museums and museum studies and the Doug, Douglas Crimps and Tony Bennett and all of the museologists, the question about the museum as a site for entertainment has been a problem. The, the idea of the museum as more than entertainment, but educative, then the, the term edutainment and all of that, that has been, that is so enmeshed in the logic of what the museum has become. Uh, I know that there are some 
um, people who are afraid that now the new, a new museum definition will come and the word entertainment isn't in it, then the museum is going to just be boring. I on the, and the, why I say that is just to say that if you describe that as a certain kind of anti-intellectualism, anti there's a longer history of that anti-intellectualism, <laughs> I would like to suggest. But, um, you know, it is true though, um, for me, and I keep saying this to people boringly, I wrote a dissertation and I'm not so sure many people read it. Um, I do an exhibition and 100,000 people see it. So if one were to imagine that the museum is a site that can impact the world, then there is a reason for us still holding to a certain complexity in the museum. That the museum must be a place where that complexity can be articulated, can be thought through, can be questioned, can be all of that needs to happen in the museum. And for us, that drives a part of our practice to ask, not just to say heritage exists, but to ask what is heritage actually? <laughs> not just to say there is an exhibition we did on crime, not just to say, um, this is a criminal, but to ask the question, what is a criminal and what is crime actually? And we can explore that together with our visitors. Now, the challenge is, and this is where I think you're asking, is how does a museum do that? And I think that the museum is exactly the site because it has the, or it should have, the methodologies for such, for such um, things. If we cannot, as museums, find imaginative and, ex and exciting and interesting but critical ways of dealing, of, of showing the complexity of the world that is around us, then I think that we're not doing our work well. Museums are built on people who make exhibitions as a translation from the complex work that you do in Coventry to a more public language. We need to develop that and stop being so anxious and shy and frightened for complexity and rather suggest that it is our work mm -hmm. to make complexity visible to our public. Mm -hmm. So that would be my one answer. And one of the other answers that I want to say to you is that I think the museum needs to understand itself as more than an exhibition machinery. Mm -hmm. For me, a museum, an exhibition is only one mode through which, and the education is one mode through which somebody criticized me and said, you do too many programming and debates in the museum. What better place to debate society than the museum? It is what better place to debate the, the idea of culture, the idea of art or the arts, the idea of practice than the museum. It is a beautiful place for such debates. The difference between us and a debate center is that we have a history, we have troubleful, troubling objects <laughs> and we have the work of people in the museum that are about a certain kind of complexity. We are not a debate center, but we are, we are exactly an exciting place where one can debate the very conceptions that underpin our, the logic or just that society is debating themselves. Mm -hmm. And are not those debates also part of the materiality, the, the logics that underpin necessarily the idea of museums, the idea of collections, the idea of even the conceptions that we have in society that you are so committed to and do. So why is not debate, debates of ideas also understood as part of that materiality and exhibition or exposure to other things yeah. uh, articulating the world? So I would definitely subscribe to that. I think we are definitely moving to a way broader conception of exhibition in yeah. the so-called expanded field of exhibition, but, but very much thinking that the idea of exposure to something is something that we are constantly exercising, be it in exhibition space or elsewhere. Yeah. So I think that idea could be also articulated and emphasized uh, when it comes to um, thinking through the problematics and, and the, um, the troubles that we, we, are, we have on the table uh, yeah. and, and also engage with that. So, um, well, Wayne, really, thank you so much for uh, your generous time, but also <laughs> generous articulation and engagement with my questions. I think you took us through a very interesting journey from the afterlives of museum to also the alternatives to the design of histories. But also, I think I've heard like in your preposition around designs also a bit of Arturo Escobar preposition yeah. around the full reverse. 
And I also wanted to say uh, that our next guest for the critical practices talk is actually Rolando Vasquez. So, um, so hopefully we will pick up on some of these aspects as well in a different case, in a different framework, uh, but definitely complementary. Well, 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 it's a conversation that I'd love to have with Rolanda at one point because we speak together as well about what are the possibilities for these kinds of objects if they were um, captured, collected in a particular epistemic logic. And I, and I, I want to talk to Rolanda about that because I think that even if one is conscripted to a particular epistemic logic, one needs to rebel at that logic to be able to imagine something else. Mm -hmm. And part of that rebellion might be that even here in Europe, these objects can serve another purpose. The question is, how do you not try to do that by forgetting the logic of, of, of violence out of which these collections came? Anyway, Carolina, thank That's you. Lovely points. Thank you so much again. Yeah.